arthritis. So this is my disclosure. We are going to talk about the spondyloarthritis, uh, spondyloarthropathies classification. We are going to talk about uh, the access criteria, criteria, spine MRI, and what about the spondyloarthritis in Peru? The term spondyloarthritis includes a group of chronic disease of joints as well as the spine and uh, sacroiliac joints. They share clinical and radiological manifestation as well as family, familiar relation and strong association of, of, uh, with HLA-B27 antigen. The prevalence estimate for actual SPA is 0.7% to 1.4% according to the ASAS criteria. Inflammatory back pain is one of the most important symptom, symptoms of the SPA. There's a little, um, some question about that. Uh, ASAS criteria that to diagnose actual SPA include MRI of SI joints to find bone marrow edema. But what happens if uh, uh, SI MRI is not requested because uh, SPA is not suspected in a patient with uh, low back pain? ASAS criteria only evaluate sacroiliac joints leaving without, uh, leaving spine without evaluation. Up to 50% of patients with ankylosing spondylitis with disease clinically active or non-radiographic actual spa can have acute spine, spinal inflammatory lesions without evidence of acute sacroiliitis by MRI. Are current criteria sufficiently capable of include to, of all those patients with potential diagnosis uh, of spondyloarthritis? What can radiologists modify to achieve a greater range of sensitivity in our studies? Spondyloarthritis is a great group of chronic disease that includes ankylosing spondylitis, psoriatic, psoriatic arthritis, reactive arthritis, enteropathic arthritis, non radiological spondyloarthritis, but uh, if we are going to talk about spinal arthritis, we need to, 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 to see this, this diagram. We, can, we need to understand that there's a, a lot of uh, uh, diseases in this group. Um, according to the, the clinical manifestations, we can classify this group in actual SPA and peripheral SPA. All these groups share clinical and radi radiological characteristics as well as the familiar aggregation and a strong association with HLA-B27. We have three points, three important points in here. Low back pain, HLA, and imaging criteria. What about the low back pain? We need to make a difference between low back pain, inflammatory low back pain, and mechanical low back pain. Uh, a great group of, uh, of patients have chronic low back pain, but uh, a little group have inflammatory low back pain. Inflammatory low back pain have, uh, uh, has a, a special characteristics, like uh, the onset of the pain is usually uh, under 35, 35 years of age and, and is insidious. Pain persists for more than three months. The back pain and stiffness do not improve with immobility, and it is worse, uh, and the back pain and stiffness improve with physical uh, activity. Insights are very effective to treat uh, this, this, this inflammatory low back pain. HLA-B27, according to reports, between 60 and 90% of the patients with a SPA have HLA-B27 antigen, but only 8% of the population have this antigen. And a study, a previous study in 2008, reported that uh, the ankylosing spondylitis was the, the most frequent diagnosis uh, and the HLA B27 antigen was found only, only in 31% 30, of that patients. It differs of the others studied, in, uh, for example, in Portugal, <clears throat> with uh, HLA B27 was positive in 85%, and in Argentina with 46%. What about imaging criteria? They were supported by 
plain railroads. But what is the problem here? That uh, it has ma its major disadvantage is the delayed phase in which it shows the changes, which uh, which can delay the diagnosis of the disease from six to eight years from the beginning of the symptoms. That is a big problem. MRI is included in the ACES criteria since 2009. This is my the place where I was born, Arequipa. This is a misty volcano. ACES criteria for axial spondyl arthritis, not for peripheral spondyl arthritis, for axial spondyl arthritis, uh, assess the presence of inflammation, the HLAB. 27 and clinical features that are specific for axial spa and take advantage of the MRI since 2009 to detect inflammation from the sacroiliac joints, not well demonstrated, but plain right errors. Using this criteria, patients are diagnosed with uh, axial spa according to the classification forms. One is using the, the the imaging criteria uh, with evidence of, of inflammation, um, either you know, radiographic or MRI. And the other way to, to make diagnosis is uh, using the, the presence of HLA B27 and clinical features uh, specific to SPA. These clinical features, you can see it in, in this, are inflammatory, but low back pain, arthritis, enthesitis, obesitis, but w we, as uh, so radiologists, uh, we don't see these clinical uh, clinical features, but we can see the, the images uh, the, the images in, in our studies. Sorry. As a criteria uh, includes uh, acute inflammatory lesions, structural uh, lesions, but there is only one one point important here: the bone edema and osteitis. They are highly suggestive of active sacroiliitis. Bone edema can be, can be found up to 90% of patients with SPA. Uh, edema is a, a hyperintense signal on steroid images and usually is, is hyperintense in T1. The side is for, for looking for an state, we need to use uh, contrast medium. Uh, we are uh, show the, the increased vascularization and perfusion related to reactive inflammation. There is an example. This is uh, the, the, the hyperintense signal, the hyperintense signal in steroid sequences, and the hyperintense signal in T1. For making the diagnosis, we need to, the one area, if we, if, if we have a one area of bone edema or osteitis, it should be present at, at least two consecutive cuts. If there were more than one edema focus, uh, we need uh, only one single cut. Osteitis, uh, bone, edema, bone, bone edema is the single indispensable criterion for diagnosis in after circulitis. In other words, the presence of an endocytis or capsulitis or synovitis is not enough to, to make diagnosis. Uh, um, we need to know that uh, up to 20% of, of, the, of the healthy people can, can, has, uh, can, can, can show this, this osteitis. What about the structural lesions? The most important is the periarticular fat bone marrow deposits. Um, I'm sorry, to, I, I don't know how to, to pronounce the, the, the last name of the Dr. Pravina, but th there is an important uh, feature here. Uh, there is a process of, uh, uh, she, she, she demonstrated that there is a process, or, uh, a sequence of steps in, can include uh, inflammation, fat bone deposits, and the final is a, a, a formation of new bones. And uh, it, it is important in, a, in the evaluation in the spine, um, uh, and when we are going to see it uh, further. Here is an example, fat bone marrow deposits, uh, hyperintense signal in T1, and hypointense uh, signal in, in STIR. This is important to know that the damage is done. MRI structural lesions are not considered in the ACES criteria for the diagnosis of sacroiliitis. Um, and they forgot another, another thing. They forgot to include the assessment of the spine. Uh, but it is present in the ACES handbook. 